Okay, and we're back for real this time. Hi. Um, Hi. I hit the... <laughs> don't, don't die this, this early. Okay. Come on. I, I hit... I've, we did the, like, countdown and all that. Like, three, two, uh -huh. one, go. And then I forgot to freaking hit record. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. At least you winning. caught it immediately. Yeah, oh. Yeah, that would have sucked if, like... If, uh... If I'd... Uh, halfway through, it's like, oh. Yeah, by the way, I, I hadn't been recording any of this crap. Welcome back. Um, Hi. We're, we're back in the... What are we doing? We're bombarding the crap out of the Greeks, because... This is the last... So, it's not they the last Greek city. They stole the Euro. They, they stole the, the Gyro? Euro. The Euro? They don't know how to pronounce their own food. It, are you talking about Euro, as in G-Y-R-O? R-O. Yeah, or are you the talking Euro. about okay, I thought you were talking about the Euro, like the No, the Euro. E U R O. The It's pronounced gyro. It's Duh. not well, okay. The, <laughs> the, the The phonetical sounding is the, gyro. The, the physical object, like there's a physics based object to prove a concept called a gyro. But the the food item, the the, the Greek taco, that's pronounced Euro. A gyro is not a proof of concept. It's a used in I mean, everyday. Okay. Yeah, I granted, but like, how many? That's if, how you, if you go buy a helicopters gyro, stay upright. If you go buy a gyro, a gyro right now, it's not gonna be like attached to anything. At least I hope so. That'd be really weird. It is like, interesting how how many like um, scientific ideas turn into toys for kids. I think it's the other way around. I thought that the wouldn't it like hold on. Industrial and modern. Alright, good. Um, wouldn't it be like, uh, instead of a, instead of a toy, like, it, something gets made, you know, like, uh, a plasma ball, right? As a proof of uh -huh. concept, and then later it becomes uh, a toy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a proof of concept that gets turned into a toy. Oh, okay. Have you seen... Like, like the yo-yo, you know? You... The yo-yo was a, a weapon of war, and was then it? now it's like, haha, look, I can do cool tricks with was it. Was it actually used as a weapon? Yeah. It seems like a pretty crap weapon. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be like a little tiny yo-yo. Oh. It was. They put like, like a, spikes a big... and crap on it. Well, it'd be a ball that you could like just throw at people, but it would with have a... such a velocity it would like crack skulls. With a string that yeah, so you could retract it, kind of like um like Scorpion's dagger. Or yeah, like, get over here. Get over here. That's a real weapon, by the way, like a chain dagger. Um, yes. speaking of items that were, uh, like, scientific anomalies turned into toys, have you seen the, like, Tensegrity structure tables? Uh, no. So, um, someone did a cool video, uh, of it explaining the idea behind Tensegrity. Basically, they had this table that was suspended entirely by strings. It looks like it's... Oh, yeah. And... Yeah, and the reason that it's suspended, air quote, is less of, like, the strings are holding it up, and more of it's trying to pull itself apart, and the strings are holding it together. Yeah. Um, Caleb, put an example of it on screen yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, put, put an image Whoa. of the tensegrity structure. There you go. Those are really cool. You can actually, like, buy those as decorative pieces for, like, side tables and things. Yeah, and you can, um, you can, like, adjust how... Uh, like tense the the strings are to make it so that it's a little yep. bit more wobbly or a little bit more stable. Yeah, very cool. Pretty cool. Uh, what do we got? Um, actually, I'm pretty happy with my military policies right now. But it's a it's a science phenomenon that just looks really cool. But it's like, oh yeah, if you know the idea behind it, it just it just works. It's got a great engineer. I just got Leonardo. They're all in equal tension, and then none of them want to fall. Leonardo, what do you do? Uh, triggers Eureka for one random technology, and workshops provide extra culture. Ooh, workshops provide extra culture. He Ooh, starts, like, putting that. paintings and crap up in all the workshops. Like, hey, I know... So we got Da Vinci has a job now, and now we gotta find a job for DiCaprio. <laughs> and then De Sewer eventually as well. Leonardo yeah. De Sewer. <laughs> uh, actually, speaking of sewers, I think we recently just unlocked sanitation. Uh, Did we? I thought that was a little further up. Wait, no, it's back. We we got it already, I think. Yeah, yeah, back here. So yeah, yeah. We actually have sewers that can potentially house turtles that are also ninja. Correct. Correct. Um, 
Wow. Yeah. Uh, good shot. Good, man. Uh, honestly... <clears throat> they're not doing so much. Could so like, you, you imagine if they went XCOM routes and had accuracy? Like, you had a chance to just miss? Uh... I feel like that would go <laughs> against... It's like... The idea. Yeah, yeah, the idea of Civ in general. Because then you could have a unit that's, like, super powerful, but if it misses, then it's powerless. Um... Like, neat. What a fun concept. In, uh, we, like, that's from Fallout 4. Um... Yeah. In, uh... The original Civilization game... Or, or at least... I guess not in the original Civilization. The first Civ game that I played was Civ 2. And then I also played Civ 3. Yep. And Civ 3 was the Civ game that I had the most hours in. Um, yeah. And in 3, any unit, in both 2 and 3, any unit that you attacked, it was a fight to the death. Oh, it was yeah, not like a, units have health and you do a little bit of chip damage. It was you attack and one of your you either dies. live or die. Yep. <laughs> And in, uh, in Civ 2, it was exceptionally brutal because you could stack units onto the same tile. Oh, yeah. Uh, but if you lost the strongest unit on that tile, all of the units underneath it would die. Wow. So if, uh, you, mm -hmm. if you had, like, a stack of, I don't know, infantry, and they get attacked by a cruise missile, and your top, like, you know, highest health with, like, veteran sea crap infantry dies... You lose that entire stack of infantry. That's really weird. Yep, it was it was pretty brutal. Um, but you know, it was also an older game, and older games tend to be that way. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, we got a dude sitting in the jeep. <laughs> he's just rolling around everywhere. Well, he's our general. You know, he you ain't gonna make him walk, right? Like. No, no, no. Of course not. Uh, we should be able to get Sparta to heal next turn. Hopefully. And then eventually, I'll open up these aluminum mines, and my regular cavalry... Oh, who's stealing from me? Oh, no, I'm stealing from them. Good, good, good. Um, eventually, my regular cavalry will get upgraded into air cavalry. Yeah. Uh, also known as helicopters. Then in the dogfighters. Well, uh, not dogfighters, but helicopters. Honestly, I do need to start oh, working okay. on an air force... Um, yes. So something that I was never really good at in this game, that I only recently started getting kind of good at, because I'm playing a lot of Civ 6, is air units. Right. Uh, They're a little more nuanced, because you have to build airports and they only have certain range and things like that. Yeah. Um, and the, the types of aircraft, I think, I think I have an airport somewhere. Oh, I wish that they had, I like, a... I don't see one. I wish that they had an item. Oh, you know what? I just realized I've got the um, the yields turned on. The icons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Messy. Right, that was. Uh, there it is. Uh huh. Yield icons. There we go. Okay. That, I just realized. Lovely. Yeah. Um, I had those on. Uh, so I transferred everything from my old PC to my new one, which is why we're in crisp 1440p today. Yeah. It's my airport. Where I have. Looks one. great. Uh, Although, uh, Discord Disc streaming yeah, still Discord says stream. no. Um, I don't have Discord Nitro, so I can't stream. Uh, how oh, there dare it is. you? Uh, so, you belong to. You belong to the city. So, I could build aircraft here. Uh, I could build yeah. biplanes. And honestly, I probably, probably just buy some. Probably should, because in order to unlock... Yeah, just buy, buy some biplanes. In order buy to unlock a advanced flight, I'm going to buy a couple of... I got plenty of money. Buy a buy that. Plane. That, and then I'll Heck yeah, can you buy two? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. That'll boost advanced flight for me. So these airports can hold oh, some biplanes, and the biplanes, uh... They have the, a certain range. The, they, they have a range that they can anywhere. attack on, but their movement is... I mean, you'll see. Their, their movement is pretty fucking insane. They're airplanes. You know, they can fly forever. So probably should get to work using those. Who needs to go down and refuel? You can also build airstrips with military engineers. Uh, Correct. In order to, like, which is like a, a like a smaller air, a range extender essentially. Uh, and then there's also aircraft carriers, uh, which are yes. range extenders on the water. Honestly, aircraft Smoke carrier on the water. Aircraft carrier combat, like in real life, is one of my favorite topics. Cause we only ever did it once. Hmm. Oh. Just like the idea that. The entirety of an aircraft is 
able to sit in a boat. Well, it's an airport on the water. Yeah, exactly. And but our airport, you ever... our airport is better than their airport. So therefore, <laughs> hey, there's the last Greek city. Um, hey. Have you ever seen the? Um, so I, I I remember watching a video or a documentary about um, the aircraft carrier takeoffs and landings. And the amount of acceleration that they have to have is insane. Mm -hmm. um, that's why they have like the uh, the blast, uh, back blast, and things like that. Right. Uh, ramps that they bring up to create more force behind the, uh, the aircraft and such. Um, well, and in order to land, like they often have uh, like a tow cable, basically. Tow cable, yeah. I need to start yeah, so things. the way the way it works is, and they do it very. I, I I could never imagine myself ever doing this, but they they come into land and they're they're going in, they're going in, but then they accelerate as they're about to hit the runway, so that way, just in case they miss that tow cable, they can immediately take right back off hmm. and not splash down in the in water because the they lost too much uh, thrust. Yeah, imagine yep. trying to land on a very short moving runway that's bobbing up and down on the water. Yes. And as you're coming into land, you're like full throttle. Yeah. <laughs> like that's gotta be nerve wracking. Oh my god, right, that's it has to be. Uh, earn double points towards great people of this class, or no points. For some reason, uh, these guys, the AI seems to like nerfing great admirals, so I'm just gonna, just gonna that's go with that. So weird. I know it. it <laughs> Uh, chosen player gains. We don't results. like boats. Diplomatic victory points, mm. and it's usually based on who's leading the diplomatic victory. Oh yeah. Um. So they're not gonna vote for Gorga because she's about to get eliminated. They might vote for yeah. me. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna vote for me on that one. Yeah. If you're too close to diplomatic victory, they'll vote against you. Um. And you could vote against yourself to only lose one point. And then. Oh, that's true. Uh, tourism from great works. I don't really cares about that, but we'll go for. Uh, music. Music, sure. Uh, Why not? World's Fair, sure. Fair of Worlds. So after the I... The world is not fair. Again, I did some research on nice... <laughs> oh I, no! <laughs> let's see, World's Fair passed. Yadwiga got Ooh. the diplomatic three points. Writing and they nerfed great merch. Wow. Um, so, what, a, what a good politician you are. Well, okay. <laughs> so I've got this going on right now. My diplomatic favor uh -huh. is negative four per turn. Yeah. And a lot of that comes from... So three of that comes from I have original capitals uh, like uh, essentially yeah. I have wiped out other You've cities. You've captured. Right? I, uh, Mapuche, um, Scotland, and now Sparta. Right? So all yep. of those are like nobody likes me because Minus of that. five per and it's yep. destroying you. Uh, well the one that's actually destroying me is my negative ten from excess grievance. I didn't know this. Against uh, Gorgo. Yeah, but every time that I do something new, negative 1100. A casual 1100 okay. grievance. And they don't start going away until I end the war, which the war has been going on for forever, so they've just been sitting there yeah. rotting, um, which is destroying my reputation. I, I'm fairly certain that even if you ended the war, um, they would still completely hate you for the rest of the war. Uh, yeah, probably. Um, but, you know, I'm not here to be popular, I'm here to take over the world. Yeah. So. <laughs> so who cares if they don't like me? Boom. It's only a dictatorship if someone doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of which, I <laughs> recent I just unlocked AT Cruise, and I'm going to get on that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sparta's got a... Olympia's also got one here. Uh, do huh. you happen to have a barracks? Yes, you do. Sweet. Are you there, then? Barrack. Bar bar uh, building... Military units in a city that has barracks uh, gives them extra XP gains. Yeah. So I'll get three so that I can form them into an army. Yeah. Let's go for AT tanks. crew army. It's pretty funny because I'm not gonna get tanks. Well, AT crews in this game are probably they're my they're probably my favorite like type of unit because <laughs> the guy they, just shoots a musket into the city. Yeah. Uh, it's, he's doing <laughs> his best. <laughs> he's doing his best. Do we have any terrain here for us to capture? Or like, Take that, modern or city! Uh, all of these great uh, writers and great artists and this great musician who are never going to get to play because their civilization, so sad. civilization is going in the gutter. 
So sad. Alexa, play Despacito. <laughs> we can't play Despacito. That's copyrighted. But, you know, you could sing. Uh, 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 no, not <laughs> working today. That's a shame. You don't strike me as a person who likes to sing a lot. Um, okay. I used to like it. You used to like to sing, or you used to actually sing? Well, I mean, I was in choral classes oh, throughout you were in the most of my... Right, I forgot you were a chorus yeah. kid. Okay. I was, I was a choir kid. You're a choir, a choir kid, nerd. not a chorus kid. Yeah. But yeah, a choir nerd. D do tell. Yeah. So, from about... What would that be? Fifth grade on, I was in every single choir class possible. Um... What do you do in like every single year? Just wake up and sing. <laughs> you, you just wake up and sing. <laughs> it, 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 the first thing out of bed, you just start start like a Disney character. You just start singing. Oh yeah, yeah, sing and the birds come. Yeah, yeah. and then everybody joins in. Uh, do I become <laughs> a democracy? I become yeah, a democracy. So a lot of the, the choir stuff growing up was we would sing a couple of songs for like performances, mm -hmm. um, and that was about it, really. But then you get into high school, and that's where, like, competitions and such happened. And you, they had, like, um, a state choir and things like that, which I qualified to go to, and all sorts of stuff. Um, it's really cool. My senior year, I was in technically three choir classes. Because hmm. uh, you had regular choir, show choir, which was a little bit more, like, performance-based. And then I was an aide in the other choir class to help with, um, like, reading music and such. Hmm. Right, because Jeez, reading that music... That was ten years ago. Ten years! Reading music is hard. It can be, yes. It can uh, be. All the little notes and crap. Uh, <coughs> what kind of songs... Well, it's all did... just about knowing how to interpret it, just like any other reading. What, kind of, what kind of songs did they have you sing in choir? Uh, a lot of stuff, but mostly more traditional, um, pieces. Like, at one point we did a, uh, a whole Requiem, which is about 20 minutes for a single piece. Hmm. Um, but it's, like, broken up into sections, and it, it was really weird. Was, um, but I then mean... my favorites is whenever we did acapella stuff. I see. Um, so you're an acapella nope, singer. Nope. I loved it. So in my senior year, I was part of a uh, men's quartet. So it was we ba we took it we took this all the way to uh, to state, but we sang uh, sea shanties. Sea shanties, like yeah. Wellerman or both. Not Bill. Wellerman. Wellerman. Wellerman wasn't one of them, but we did do. Um, down Among the Dead Men, which is an amazing piece. Hmm. Um, and not, then also... Not familiar, so I'll take your word. Drunken Sailor. Okay, Drunken Sailor. Everybody knows Drunken Sailor. Everyone knows that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, Drunken Sailor is yeah. like the, the kind of thing that we would sing, like our drinking songs in Korea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But those were some of my favorites, were the, the shanty style. And especially once I became... Um, because, you know, th throughout high school, you go through puberty and your voice drops dramatically. Yeah. You didn't... Uh, I started oh, out as a tenor. I was going to say, did you have, like, a cute little high-pitched voice when you were when you started out so, in choir? And then you just... Your, as a freshman... Your voice became very low. As a freshman, <laughs> I started out where some pieces I sang at alto level. Uh, I don't know what that means. Enlighten me. So, you've got... On the, the female side, there's soprano and there's alto. Uh, there could be and male then, sopranos too, right? There can, uh, it's very rare, but yes. It's like the super um, high-pitched trap? Correct, okay. yeah. Because like, it's all about octaves, so sopranos usually sing at a really high octave. Altos are like the... They're basically the bass equivalent of the female parts. The bass. So they're a lower... Um, and then you got tenor and then bass. Okay. Um, for the, the men's side most of the time. But with the super but, low voices. Yeah. So you they kind of break it down into like tenor one, tenor two, which is kind of like your highs and somewhat high, and then bass, and then, or uh, baritone, and then bass. So I started out as a tenor one, and sometimes even sang as an alto 
in certain parts. Mm -hmm. And then throughout high school, I ended up going next year, uh, my um, sophomore year, I was a tenor two. Mm. And then <laughs> junior year, I was a baritone. Mm. And then senior <laughs> year, I was a low bass. Just every time, every time that you... Uh... Like the next year rolls around, you you change <laughs> positions because your voice is getting deeper and deeper. Pretty much, that's yeah. pretty fucking cool. In fact, in my senior year, I had one of the lowest voices possible in our choir group, so I was getting like the low bass parts. I in find all that kind of strange song. because, and I mean, I don't know if you take this as like a slight or anything, but like your voice isn't that deep, at least not when no. you're talking. Um, no, but not when I'm talking. But I, I noticed when I sing though. Okay, I was gonna say <laughs> I noticed that when when I'm editing like our like trying to balance audio and everything, your voice mm -hmm. just has this like low bass like undertone to it. Yes. That's like holy like it, you know I gotta make sure that I don't <laughs> blow out everyone's ears. But it's like oh my god, why is your voice so bass heavy? <laughs> there there's a lot of bass below my voice. You know? Uh, um, I used to. Oh god, I don't know how much I want to share. Um. <laughs> Because, like, okay, because I was, you know, when you're, the, the only exposure I had to singing when I was a kid was, like, singing church, because, you know, it's hymns and crap, yeah. right? Um, and I wasn't very good at it, but, like, you got to. Like, you, you got to. You got to. Got um, when I was very young, my voice was very high-pitched, and then as I got older, my voice got, except, like, lower than it is now. My, I don't know why, my voice went up, like, back up. Uh, well, your vocal cords settle out. I, I guess so. That's when I was 15 years old, uh, my voice sounded like that. You know that one video of the cat with the super low, like meow. Yeah. Have you, uh, that was my voice. It was just like yeah. someone would say hi and be like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> this like skinny, like short 15 year old kid. Hi. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. I was a skinny, like short right. kid, Wait. and they would. Oh man. An absolute. When we did. We did the men's quartet, yeah. and we, we did it kind of like a uh, barbershop quartet. I see. Um, oh man, the... that, that's fucking cool. I want. I, I'm. I'm. I'm trying to imagine sticking a barbershop quartet now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had this one kid. Um, oh, I was shocking. Who was all this? Over this again. bigger dude. Yeah. He was a bigger dude, and you look at him, and he's like, "Oh, that's the bass." Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a, a power behind him. No, he was our tenor. <laughs> He was like a six foot four tenor. <laughs> six four. It's always the big guys with like, you, you look at him and the you're high like, pitched voice. he's either got a high pitched voice or a really or low pitched voice. Super low There's voice. There's no exactly. in between. Exactly. I speaking of voices that like you didn't you didn't expect. Um, when I was in, I was visiting uh, doing a military bit in Texas. Hmm. There was a dude. Whose last name was Salisbury, like the steak, uh -huh. um, and I had not heard. The I, I'd heard southern accents before, obviously growing up in Texas, but like I had not yeah. heard a thick southern accent until I met this guy. <laughs> when this guy introduced himself, he was like, and and, and my my crappy impression isn't going to do him justice because it was it was like more intense than what I could muster, but he was like. How's it going, everybody? I'm I'm Colonel Salisbury. I'm your set team commander, and I'm like, he's making that up. Oh my like, god! He's he's there's no way he's doing a bit. And as you like <laughs> talk to him, you're like, oh my god! Like that's just that's how this is actually that's how, how he talks. thick he is. And I'm like, where are you from? He's like, I'm from New Orleans. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> that tracks. That tracks. Every oh everybody god. from New Orleans. Pronounce it like everyone pronounces the name of that city differently. <laughs> New Orleans. Because if you're from there, it's like just kind of a noise. You drop that you... all consonants basically. <laughs> it's a, it's New Orleans. It's, it's a noise that you make. You're like, I'm from New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> but then people from like with a French background would be like New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> Beca well, because that's how they pronounce their city. Um, yeah. And then obviously people like you and me that are just like New Orleans. Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. 
And with that bit of uh, education out of the way, well, we should take a break. That's not education. <laughs> but yeah, we, we should take a break. Um, we we a got break. Sparta under our belt. Yay. Hooray. And soon we'll have the rest of Greece. And then we'll have to... Marcellos is going next. Oh no, international, uh, intercontinental conflict. Oh boy. I love the idea that these guys are still squabbling back and forth about, like, Catholicism <laughs> versus Protestantism. And, and, and meanwhile, Robert here just taking over the world. War. <laughs> Ooh, All right, but yeah, we'll, a big we'll take a break. Uh, talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye bye. Stick, you're absolutely going to do some singing. No.